Today's video we're gonna turn this old refrigerator here into a smoker so one of the nice things to do would be to find an older one so you knock one of these little tabs off and you see this pink insulation or it could be yellow inside and now uh, that's the easier ones to clean because the newer ones have uh, rigid foam in there and they're really hard to get the insulation out but we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull out any screws and peel this out and expose it you know this one's metal in here it almost be nice to keep it so that you can uh, have a little bit of extra insulation but I think it'd be best just to rip all this out and just have a metal metal box and we'll use that as a smoker one of the things to do to be able to clean the doors you gotta pull the oh get my hand in the way. Pull this magnetic strip back, and then underneath there, you can see that little metal strip. There'll be screws in there holding that on. It's pretty cold out, so it's stiff. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But I'll pull the magnetic strips off. Then I'll be able to pull out any plastic that's in there. Get rid of the plastic. And then put maybe put the magnetic strips back on the, the door gasket magnetic strip magnetic door gasket i'll put that back on so it seals up this fridge has been kicked around a little bit i don't care just gonna be a smoke we put outside first you could even maybe paint it black if they really cared uh, but uh, we're just going to use it for smoking salmon keep a, a individual fish smoker separate from the meat regular uh you know pork chops and jerky smokers i don't like fishy tasting pork chops you get that smell in there and it transfers to your different meats I find so I'll make a new one for just fish and uh, we'll end up flipping it upside down so the fr small freezer compartment will be where the smoke is it'll have its own door so when you want to open your chips or add chips to your heat source you just open the lower door and then all the smoke in the top won't escape so we'll um, I'll strip it down a bit here and get, get it down to the carcass and then we'll show you what we go from there Okay, I've opened it up a bit, <clears throat> pulled off some trim, pulled off uh, that lower panel, just popped out of here, and then she got some screws, so we'll pull these out, pull the screws out on each side, pull out the insulation, and, uh, and then the, the top should be done. <clears throat> I should be able to get the cooling tubes off, put it from the drill. Without losing the coolant, so I can recycle that, or at least take it to somebody who can. Are we saving all the screws? Can we use them somewhere else? Unbolting the compressor from underneath and taking that out as well, and that way we won't lose any of the refrigerant into the atmosphere. So I'll go at that. Okay, I'm not going to be able to, to take it out without cutting the line. It turns out. So what I've done is I've carefully gone along with my big snips and I've crimped the lines so I can make a cut. Fold it over. That way we won't be releasing all that into the atmosphere. It's a nice uh, tight crimp there. If I did lose some, you know, that's too bad, I guess, but we try to do our best. With that fold there, it won't leak. All right, progress so far. I've got to know just about everything that I can find that goes through it. 
managed to get the cooling system removed without releasing the coolant in the atmosphere. The tray that was underneath, the drip tray and all that, that uh, was held on by four screws. Cut the wires, won't use the pump. It's old and inefficient, I'm sure. And then there's four holding on the main radiator in the back. Get some extra metal here. Scrap. So now I've got this crossbar loosened off. Just took out the, a couple screws. And I should be able to just pull this inner liner out. So I'll go ahead and uh, give that a tug. Big steel box for a smoker. We'll clean this thing out a little more and get back to you. All right, the progress thus far. Use that inner piece that we can use as a garbage can. Uh, once I dump the garbage out of it, that's going to be a great uh, bin for putting like electrical wire and stuff. So I'm going to actually keep that. I'll reuse that. We gutted the door, so I end up peeling these up just with my thumb. Take a screw, pull out all the screws of the drill, take the insulation out, put the gasket back on, door shuts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a padlock sort of thing screwed on here so people can't mess with it. I uh, lived in a busy area near Kelowna, West, West Bank actually, and I was watching at night and people are actually coming along and opening the door to my fridge while my fish are smoking and letting out all the heat and the, the smoke and trying to dry them out. So I'm going to actually have it so that you have a lock that will clasp it down. So we're going to drill holes in the sides, put radio rod through so we can put uh, oven oven racks. We can get salvage out oven racks from any landfill recycling center easy. So that'll be uh, easy to get a hold of. I've got lots already from my other smoker. And I actually have some salvage red radio rod that was used to hang um, iron pipe in a commercial building. So I'll be using that too, stuff I got. On the inside here, you know, the insulation is still sort of back. We have a scraper. Just scrape it off, but before you ever put any food in here to smoke any fish, we're going to put a fire in there. We're going to burn it out. And then we're going to take a hose. We're going to wash all this off, give it a scrub, and then we'll use it for or working on our meat. But for now, um, this will be good. I'm not going to use it until the spring anyway. So the next time there's a run or maybe I'll get some trout ice fishing and do that's to be seen. So I'm going to take this piece off, fix that up, and then I'm going to flip it upside down because this piece here in the bottom, I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to put a slanted roof on it. So when the condensation hits the roof, it won't drip directly back up down on the meat. And I'm going to hit a, a piece of plywood and it'll just sort of go on an angle. Well, you can just imagine like this, it'll be a, a, I'll put some top, shingles on the top. Condensation will hit it, it'll run to the back and down instead of dripping directly back on the meat. But uh, we're going to do a little bit more work to it, flip it upside down, and that will be a, one of the next steps. Alright, got the other door off. This one is tricky, they put a screw in every hole. They didn't do that on the top. Take these out. These are aluminum. I'll sell the scrap aluminum later. So I'm over my metal towel. The rest of this is garbage for me. Some wire. Give me step for the. I don't know what that is. It's eating coil. Oh, yeah. It's to, to heat up the butter. Pull this 
So got the plate with the bits that are frozen in there because a little water got in there. Not much of it, and it'll do it quick. So I'll clean this up, put that gasket back on there, and then uh, make next step. All right, we got the inside gutted out, doors gutted out, and everything back together. Beers are freezing before I can finish them out here, so I'm probably gonna go inside and warm them up. But uh, I measured 11 feet or 11 feet, 11 inches down on the one side, six inches down the other side. I'm gonna cut that as an angled roof. Got all my mark lines marked out. And then the main thing is I'm trying to get rid of this floor. So I'm going to end up coming along and cutting just along the top on the bottom or the top of this thing, the, what used to be the bottom. And I'll be leaving this piece in and sort of cutting around it somehow. And then um, that'll make it so I'm going to make a vent where the smoke can get out at the top here. And then this will just be like a little flashing to cover the vent. I think it'll work. Maybe I'll do it differently. But I'm going to go warm up, uh, charge up my camera here, and then uh, come back and finish her off. All right, we use the old saws all there, metal cutting blade. Use a demo blade if you want. Hack the top off. Top sitting here. So this piece, you can see I tore the tack welds out. I'd be realized a little bit. It was tacked in there, there, and there's another one in the end. But um, I made the cut, stand back a bit. Made the cut and then just went straight up so I can keep my little flashing on the top there. And then I made a cut just straight across and then tore that little strip out second. I just got the big angled piece off first and then uh, got at that and just tore it off with a screwdriver. Popped those three little tack welds, peeled right out of there. So at this point, I'm ready to, uh, I'm going to get some 2x4s, screw them on here so I can mount a piece of plywood, then I can shingle it later. I'll have that piece of plywood come like, take a picture of this side where it's not blinded in light. I'll have that piece of plywood come up to like right about here, probably right up to that metal, and there'll be just a little bit of room for smoke to get out so that the moisture can escape. So, you know, you're not, we're trying to smoke them and dry them, not have a sauna steam them so i have the door back a little bit we'll have a, a locking clasp so we can clasp this shut i'll put my rebar in but that's that step so now i'll go inside and uh warm up and i'll come back and finish some more all right we've been back at it i put some boards in up here Pre-drilled the holes, screwed in some boards, uh, used the level there just to make sure that the one side's good to the other, everything all lines up. And uh, cut a piece. I didn't have a piece of plywood kicking around exactly big enough or larger that, to fit, so I ended up scrapping a couple pieces together. But, you know, four screws down each side, two in the middle here. And I'm sure it'll be plenty tough enough. You know, even at four feet of snow, it'll be enough to hold the weight. And there's my piece of plywood. So I'll get you set up here in the tripod and uh, slip that piece of plywood in quick. It'll sit on there again. We'll just put some shingles on. I got a few bundles of old shingles that I've, you know, Extras off of roofing jobs here and there, so I only take three or four shingles. And there's a slight gap right here, about an inch, to let smoke out. There's the odd gap under here, let smoke out. And then this will cover that gap, so you know, over the winter time, snow won't really get in there too much and won't rain on it so much. You know, there's a lot of room here, but whatever, just a smoker. So I'll screw that down and see if we can't. Figure out about five or six shingles are all the same color. All right, we made some progress on the fish smoker here. Got the roof, screwed it on, threw some shingles on. It's minus twenty tonight, so the shingles are kind of you know hot day and they'll they'll flatten out a little better. 
just hammer on there. It doesn't need to be anything too terribly special. I only had enough doweling to, um, not doweling, enough ready rod to put uh, three rows in. So we put some nuts on the outside. I pre-drilled the holes. I, I uh, have enough spots to put three more rows. And I've already uh, center punched them. So when I get more, my hands on more of that ready rod, I'll put some more in. On the inside, we've got, you know, we've got the roof. We've got enough spot for three good oven racks. Some holes in the back so we can pull our propane in. Put my latches on, but I think we're going to call it quits on that tonight. That's all the materials I have. I'm going to put it on a pallet too, and, and you see I got some 2x4s under there just so we can open the, the bottom door. So when I put it on a pallet, I'll put a couple boards under there, boost it up, and I'll be just about ready. I can even put a little meat thermometer through the side to you know monitor the temperature. All right, at this point, I... Uh, Put the fridge onto a pallet. Um, the main reason for the pallet is I, I have forks in my tractor so I can pick it up easy and also it gives you a really good counterweight so when that door is wide open and a, a fridge is empty or smoker um, it'll make it so it doesn't tip over. So we rigged up a latch here. You know, normal padlock latches that I'd use, they're kind of expensive and I don't happen to have any around, but I had this, so we're using this for now at least. Just a rubber tie down, I put a knot in the middle just to shorten it up, and then this is a hook off of an old one of these bungees. Just rigged up. Works good. So the inside, I need to vacuum it out yet. I took a brush and brushed all along the insides brush the back off, try to get all the insulation, the pink insulation out. Oh, there's so much glare here. Need a little bit of insulation left in spots, but I'll give it all a good sweep. You can see I used some self-tapping uh, wide head roofing screws there. Six of them, three in the back, three in the front. I boosted it up with a two by six that I actually found that I was walking along a creek and I found that washed down from somewhere and I dragged it home. It was a full length board, pressure treated even. So that got used here, otherwise, I would have used a 2x4. So that's all screwed down good. So uh, my barbecue collection's all buried in snow right now. What I normally do is I'd steal the side burner off of an old barbecue and plumb that through the back to be the burner. This is a bit overkill. This is like some sort of moonshiner's burner or something. And the length of the hose. For the regulator is laughable. There's no way you're going to be able to use that and not have trouble. So uh, once I burn this thing out with my tiger torch, I'll swap the hose onto this burner and get a cast iron pan out and uh, give it a good smoking. It'll smoke the snot out of it there just to get a good layer of that scent inside. Maybe I'll help plaster down some of uh, whatever dirt. But we're going to burn it out next just so that I can um, if there's any mold, this is an old fridge, and if there's any kind of mold, mildew issues, any bugs living in there, I'm going to get them. Uh, normally I would light a fire in there before I put the, the roof on the top, but everything around here is under snow. I don't even feel like getting firewood out of my good firewood pile to light a fire, so we'll just, uh, we'll just use a propane and burn her out with that torch. So I'll do that, we'll cook it out and uh, get ready to do a test smoke. anything that's in there that was melting off the insulation pretty well so um i think it's good my uh door gas gets a little mildewy i'd say so i gave it a little extra heat um you know since fish is never actually going to contact any of the metal it won't even contact these uh ready rod shelves i've got this here the thermometer we can 
up in the side. I guess I'm gonna have to make the hole a little bigger. The thermometer, so we can, it might not be the most accurate to like the actual temperature, but it'll give you a reference point. So if you find a spot that you like heat wise, then you just uh, you know shoot for that, whether it's actual heating or not. That that rack's a little bit warped. But you, you stick your fish or your whatever you're gonna smoke on top of the grills. Strips of jerky, strips of uh, salmon. Now this one might not actually fit too wide. Let's see, there's also smaller ones. I got all the largest oven racks I could find. Another thing we have here is these uh, sticks. So if you're doing sausages, just get some of these uh, strips going. I don't have a very good light in there. Get some of these strips going and uh, you hang the sausages off of that or hams or whatever. So we'll um, we'll get a burner going here and do a test one. All right, you can see the smokers rocking. Smokes are smoking. Got my uh, tank hooked up here. Pumps through the hole, plugged the holes with some of that aluminum metal tape for ducting. I had some kicking around. Thermometer in there. When I started, it was off over here. So it's heating up a bit. I got the flame as low as I possibly can get it just to uh, save on fuel because I'm not really interested in making heat. I'm just trying to make smoke, get a nice layer of smoke on this thing. So we'll come down here and open up the bottom. Get the chips burning. See the smoke's just pouring out of there. Let me get some of these chips out of the middle. Yeah, they're they're blackening off good. It's starting to char. Load it up. Get a good christening on this thing. Get it all uh, smoked in good. Make it taste but poor for the bugs. The bugs don't want to live in there so much if it's just all smoky. We'll let it go. That should be about it for this video. Take a look in the top. There's enough smoke in there. You don't need a lot of smoke. But if you just get a bigger flame and a bigger fire going, then you get more smoke. Plus, I'm using green chips. You use dried chips. They'll smoke a lot better. But there's three racks worth and I can add three more racks. You get a lot of salmon in there, you probably get two fish per shelf here. So you get six shelves in there, you know, you get close to 100 pounds of fish. And they're uh, great little smokers. Anyways, that wraps this one up. We'll uh, go find something else to show you guys how to make. and. Have a good day. If you enjoyed this at all, found it useful, like, share, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.